Support for this episode of the PowerCast comes from Mark Bell's Slingshot. Check out the all-new website at howmuchyoubench.net. Bench heavy with no pain with Mark Bell's Slingshot. Apparel for strong people from our friends at 8manstrong.com. And Bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com is the world's number one fitness website and supplement store. Bodybuilding.com has free fitness plans for every fitness level. Visit Bodybuilding.com today to become your best self. In episode 171 of the PowerCast, find out why Lane Sumner, owner of an 1,102-pound single-ply squat, thinks he's also the rightful owner of the nickname Vanilla Gorilla, being that he's now the second Vanilla Gorilla we've had on the show. Uh, Mark actually makes the case that Blaine is the best-looking super heavyweight powerlifter. We talk about his giving up on football, raw versus single-ply lifting, why he trains alone, and what self-spotting devices should really look like when you're lifting massive weights. No, he's not selling any equipment. If you like this episode, hit the like button and share it with your friends. Enjoy number 171. Uh, this is happening now. Yeah, there we go. I'm live. I'm live? Am I here? Am yeah, I you're there. I'm live. Yep, hey. Blaine's live. Got him. I think I'm here. Yep, there we go. <gasps> All right. Recorded live. Fourth, Super fifth training. time charm. However many Mike, times I don't know if you're aware of this in gym, but uh, Power we set a record today. We did. Silent Mike Body weight. Jim we McDean. have Here's your the host, most Mark handsome. Bell super heavyweight power lifter of all time in the house today the vanilla gorilla blaine sumner oh what's that oh ray ray has something to say about that. Oh. <laughs> ray ray thinks he's handsome oh damn i thought chad, chad. wesley smith uh, claimed, oh, you know he's I always he's trying like to top five maybe <laughs> if he's, he's always trying to he's always trying to push that top five maybe he's always pushing his baby picture though i think he's been he doesn't look like that anymore i think he's been dethroned look at this guy yeah i think so too he gave up on the hair. He understands he just had need to shave it. See, Chad's so got smart. this going on right here. Yeah, I, yeah. I, the I Friar Tuck just, or something. Yeah. <laughs> Poor you got to let it go. You're more rugged and stuff, too. You're fishing and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, that's kind of like... Man's man. Yeah. It turns me on. Real American. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chad's out in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> buying Gucci purses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put a fake. Exactly. Exactly my point. We're here with the Vanilla Gorilla 1,102-pound squat, 815-pound deadlift, 885-pound bench press. So you have all bench marks, single what ply you're competition. <laughs> <laughs> he does, indeed. He's a strong motherfucker. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. 2,800-pound uh, total, right? Right. And uh, that's the all-time biggest total in the history of the USAPL slash IPF, I believe, right? Maybe. Uh, what, what about single ply outside of that? What's the best ever? I think that's it. Yeah. That's it, it, huh? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> What's your uh, numbers like raw, just to give these kids that are listening your street cred that Why don't understand? Yeah, that don't understand single <laughs> ply. Let's give you some street cred. What's the uh, what's the raw numbers look like? All right, training or me? Who cares? We'll we'll just go we'll go meat numbers. Biggest meat numbers. Uh, Nine fifty. Add them a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nine fifteen raw squat sleeves. sleeves. Strong. Damn. Um, Five twenty nine bench press. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, seven seventy one deadlift. Nice. Uh, do you think raw that... or sumo? Uh, I'm like the same both. <laughs> oh yeah, so, okay, yeah. yeah. yeah I was gonna say most cheating. Do you think the <laughs> seventy seventy one uh, compared to the eight sixteen or whatever it is uh, was suit or that meat day? Uh, just that meat day. I have this. The deadlift suit's weird for me. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think a lot of people say. Yeah. Not that it doesn't help because it definitely helps some. Yeah. Uh, but I think it. <laughs> is yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's topic yeah. it's for sure the other the other thing uh that people probably don't know about blaine is that uh he has the uh, all-time highest wilkes total is that still true or did that get surpassed with uh what the big man did oh no that, that's single ply right right yeah, yeah, yeah. all-time highest wilkes total which is funny because that's per body weight right right <laughs> yeah is it wilkes uh i don't know what we use I forgot what it was. Uh, Schwartz and Malone are the ones. One of them, it's they the say they help big guys. Men. I forgot which they one. They usually all do yeah. in some way because Fasters. it's not like times body weight. Yeah. You know, somebody who weighs 165 might be able to total a 1650 total, but somebody who weighs 370 is not going to do yeah, yeah. 10 times their body weight that way. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway. Except Jesse Norris. Blaine, what's... Uh, <laughs> Let's first of all talk about the Vanilla Gorilla. Yeah. All right. Because there's a couple of them out there. Uh, three? And then also... I think? The Vanilla... Like, 
you know, the na- the nickname the Vanilla Gorilla, where did it come from for you? So we're starting off with the origin? Yeah, yeah. yeah give us all a right. year, that the first time the, you ever called the Vanilla Gorilla. All right. So the year was 2008. <laughs> okay. I was, a, uh, I was playing college football at the Colorado School of Mines, and every Sunday after our game, we had a big team meeting in the lecture, in one of the lecture halls there, and uh, we had to entertain the team before before the meeting started right that's great right it's awesome that was probably funny as hell (laughs) and we uh so we were setting up a fake boxing match and uh we had a kid on the team from the ivory coast and so he was the boxing announcer right and it was me i don't even know who my opponent was going to be going yes it goes good (laughs) so we're getting down there we're gonna have our fake boxing match we've got our buddy he's announcing and when he introduces me um he goes in the red corner. <laughs> I have a terrible accent. That's right. Again. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I, I love it. Go for it. Standing at six foot two, three hundred and seventy five pounds from Conifer, Colorado, the Vanilla Gorilla. <laughs> that was very European, but yeah, that's Puerto Rican or something. That's right. <laughs> that must have killed everybody when it, you said yes. that. Everybody must have died laughing, right? Absolutely. That's where it originated. Damn, that's pretty good. That's yeah. probably before the Spoto video. Yeah. So maybe well, you're the vanilla before the, the Spoto. An important thing about nicknames is that you cannot create your own. Someone else has to give it That's to you. True. So you got that as legit as possible. <clears throat> That's yeah, true. You got, that, you got that part down. Yeah. The only rappers can create their own names, I feel like. <laughs> right. That's the only way it's okay. And then uh, tell us, you know, you're, you're talking about football right there for a minute. Uh, tell us about your football career. Did you have a chance to, to get to the next level? You played some college football? Yeah, I uh, played Division Two at the Colorado School of Mines. Um, started four years, played nose tackle, cool, and fullback in short yard situations. <laughs> oh, there you go. Second on the team in touchdowns. Yeah, they yeah. say score a couple yeah. touchdowns. <laughs> um, graduated in 2010, which was the year of the lockout. Um, right. Had a few pro days. Did well at the pro days. Um, nothing ever came through. Had right. phone calls and meetings with the Eagles and Redskins. Didn't get picked up. Right. Didn't want to go the CFL way. Decided to move on and. Lift some weights and start Was working. that pretty much it? You, you just moved on, or, or was it like, uh, you know, maybe I'll train for a year and just kind of take off from some, from some of that, and then uh, I'll try again or something like that? Or you were just like, no, nah, um, I'm good? Um, so it was 2011 when I was focusing full-time on training for the NFL. Right. Camps had started. Season had started. I hadn't got a call. Right. Delusionally, I was still running a little bit, and then over the next few months, yeah. the running just decreased less, <laughs> less and less. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. How does that go about? Like, uh, do you automatically try to get a manager? Do you talk to your college coach? Do you talk to? Obviously, you said you talk to the Eagles and Redskins a little bit, but do they even give you uh, legitimate hints or tips of what's going on? Or are they all kind of like bullshit? Like, yeah, buddy, we're gonna get you. You know? Or do you do you have a real clue? Like, all right, maybe come November, injuries happen, and I could do it. Or is it like? Uh, yeah, still, because like in high school, I'm like, fuck it, yeah, I'm going to the NBA. You know, like you, yeah. you have no clue. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, it's mostly bullshit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got an awesome agent. I don't know if you pay attention at all. Kevin Poston was, mm-hmm. was his name. Okay. He's, uh, he pretty much represents all the big time guys who always hold out on their contracts. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so he's an asshole, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first white guy they ever represented. Oh, awesome. kind of cool. Uh, um, talked with the Eagles and the Redskins. Closest I got was uh, the Redskins. Um, our man or our agent and I had conversed with the, the scouting agent. Mm-hmm. Said I had a spot in camp. I was fishing on Grand Lake in Colorado at the time. <laughs> Two hours later, they called back and said our spot's taken. Damn, uh, as close as it got. Son of a bitch. Yeah, it's got to be annoying. Uh, I looked up some stats on you, buddy, <laughs> and uh, you didn't have just a regular pro day. You went pretty <laughs> nuts on pro day. You, and in fact, that. From the information that I saw, it said that you broke the record for 225 for the most amount of reps. How many reps did you do? I did 55, and I got red-lighted on three. <laughs> so 52 officially, which yeah. is still the record. How many can you do nowadays? Any idea? It was probably 10 before I run out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> probably just start gasping for air, right? <laughs> so was uh, lifting just something you were kind of good at? Like, there's always that high school kid that's just crushing weights, you know, one or two on the football team. Uh, and then college was that... Were, were you always kind of better at lifting weights in football, would you say? No. And I got kind of a crazy story. I, when I was a freshman in high school, I was six foot, 145 pounds. What? Skinny. <sighs> Hadn't found McDonald's yet. Hadn't found McDonald's <laughs> yet. Conifer, Colorado. Didn't have just up in the mountains, done mm-hmm. McDonald's. And just uh, lifted weights for football. Right. Wasn't strong um, until I had done it for a lot of years and just loved doing 145 it. 145 pounds. Yeah. Damn. At what age? Freshman in high school. Yeah, that's so, pretty crazy. Is that kind of your first experience with lifting? 
Yep. Just Were you pretty strong right off the bat, or did it just no. took a long time oh, like, to gain weight and to gain strength? And it took a long time. I remember. When we tested when we were freshmen, I was the second weakest kid on the team. Wow! Um, by the senior year, I was strong, but I didn't I didn't start off being big and strong naturally. Right, that's pretty crazy. It's like uh, most of the time when we talk to the super heavyweight yeah. guys, they've been pretty big. Mo- they they yeah. were three plus like in high school. Yeah, Usually, yeah. like Dan, Dan was or Brian Shaw, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, even pretty, Chad. You know, he was throwing right, and yeah. seemed like he was always big boned. So like, like, is that what you guys founder. like to be, to be called? <laughs> Sounds more like efforting. What about yeah. athletic ability? Did you have some athletic ability? Uh, yeah. In high school, I did football, wrestling, lacrosse, okay. um, track. I was all state and all so that. You had, so you had a, a good uh, – you had high potential to do well in lifting because you had an athletic yeah. background at least. Yeah. That a lot of times accelerates you know, where people go in the sport is that they come from something else. Stan Efforting was very light <clears throat> in high school, and I think even his – Freshman year of college, yeah. I think he was still very light. He played soccer, yeah, too, but, but, he had but I think Division one scholarship yeah. for soccer, and you know, so and then he's a professional bodybuilder, you know, yeah. so he's got some awesome genetics behind him. Yeah, we talked about it. that a little bit in the last podcast, where like the the top of our sports, uh, strength sports, are still maybe they're like kind of rejects from other sports, but they're top level. You know, yeah. Bryce Lewis had a D1 volleyball scholarship. You know, uh, Brooke Wells and CrossFit had a, a D1 track and field scholarship. You know, it's not like they're they're just hokey pokey and then, oh, I'll do some CrossFit. You know, like they're <laughs> fucking legitimate athletes yeah. and then just, you know, turn the corner and choose a different sport. You have the ability to still jump? They said you had a 30-inch vertical back in the day. Uh, yeah, I think... I think 32 and a half was, was my highest recorded. Nice. Um, same story. I probably haven't jumped since 2011. So. That's pretty big, though. <laughs> yeah, the landing might be a little rough, more so than anything else. The jumping might not be that bad, but landing would hurt probably really bad. Your ankles get all fucked up. <laughs> How would you uh, find like uh, powerlifting then as a sport? Uh, so my dad did it before I was born. Um, not, not really. Uh, he didn't compete until I kind of picked it up again. Um, there's a great gym in Aurora, Colorado called Rocky Mountain Lifting Club. Uh, when I was going to college, um, I wanted to be better at lifting. I was still focused on being an athlete full time, but right. wanted to learn more, be smarter about how I train. So I found them, uh, and that's where I was first really exposed to powerlifting. That's cool. Squad mentioned deadlifting. A lot of people are in Colorado, man. Yeah, seems like it. A lot of lifters. Where are you at now, though? You're in Texas, are you? I'm in Oklahoma now. Oh, Oklahoma. It's all the same. Why the hell do I think? Not even close. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and uh, California, New York, and then kind of the rest. <laughs> what do you do in Oklahoma? I'm a petroleum engineer for an oil and gas company. Damn. What does that mean? <laughs> I frack. What does that mean? I don't know what that means either. <laughs> uh, we drill wells, all um, Texas, Wyoming, okay. Oklahoma. Oh. Um, and then cool. my job is to come in after they drill the wells and frack them. And then how long have you been doing that for? Uh, and that's what I went to school for. So I've been doing it full time since 2011. Hmm. Was it, is there any like manual labor involved or is it all you're, you're sitting at a desk, you're doing computer stuff? Like what's... It's, yeah, it's not manual. Okay. It's sitting down mostly. Being, being lazy. Exactly. <laughs> what do you think of uh, what's going on with powerlifting right now? We've been talking about that quite a bit on the show lately, uh, some of the lifts that have been going on. And then we saw uh, Ray Williams uh, recently hit that 1,005 squat, walked out in a pair of knee sleeves. What do you think the hell's going on with powerlifting right now? I, I think it's ridiculous. It's blowing up to a, a yeah. level that uh, I think you're, you're seeing numbers now that are related to that. I'm going to be terrible here, but the first guy to break that four minute mile. Yeah. And then everyone yeah. else does it. Yeah. yeah. And then it becomes the norm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we were talking like a, a 900 pound squat and sleeves used to be something people didn't even think about. Like right. that Don Reinhout did what, 930 or something way back. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think people. Yeah, in the 70s, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We saw a 1,025 uh, single ply squat in a competition in our gym years ago. And that seemed like that was like the. That, I mean that that number hadn't been bumped in a long time. It wasn't international competition or anything, but that number had yeah, been bumped in a long time. time. It was an all time world record, yeah, exactly. Um, and then it was, uh, you know, it got broken like a few weeks later by right. Milanovchev, I believe. You know, and but it's interesting, you know, what we've been talking about also too here on the podcast is how the the guys from the Tested Federation are blowing up these huge numbers, and it's astronomical. And now, a thousand five walked out squat. <laughs> You know, it's not that far off from 1,050, which is the all-time record in knee wraps. Um, some guys use the monolith. Some guys don't. The yeah. record goes back and forth. Milanovchev just always chooses to walk it out because he doesn't care, I don't think. 
Um, but it's just, it's amazing. What do you think is the main contributing factor? Do you think it's just training? Yeah, or? what's closing this gap? I, I really don't think it's training. I don't think there's anything new to scientific training principles. I, I 100% believe that it's people eclipsing these eclipsing these barriers right. and thinking that, all right, this guy did it. This guy did 1,000. I can do 1,050. So the internet might be a big part of it, too, because now the information is, is traveling a lot faster, and people are seeing, people are seeing Blaine Sumner bench 900, and people are seeing all these different things going on. And, and they're now thinking that maybe it's possible they can one day do that, too. Right. Are performance-enhancing drugs not performance-enhancing? <laughs> <laughs> like, are they not working? Like, I think we talked about it, too. Like, if, if this gap is closing and if training is all similar, which I honestly don't think it is. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. I can't interview every single lifter in non-tested and tested, but I think often, I think we uh, have talked about this and kind of agreed that sometimes it seems like these um, USAPL, IPF guys uh, have a better plan, uh, and maybe that's super stereotypical, uh, but maybe that's what I see from the outside, that often they all have coaches. Bryce Lewis is a great coach himself, and he has a coach, right? So these people have a plan um, where some, some of these uh, other lifters you know, uh, don't. It seems like, you know, and that's just obviously me going surveying Instagram. This isn't fact. We right. talk about all my facts are like half true. <laughs> so these aren't facts. These are just my opinions. Um, so that's kind of what I said was the difference. But then, you know, if you think things are similar, does that mean that more genetically gifted people are going to the USAPL IPF? Um, I guess I guess that could have something to do with Maybe. It. it. Yeah. I mean, Ray Williams, I think, was a really, really high level football player as well. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Well, how long has Ray Williams been in the IPF for USAPL? Probably the last five years or so, at least, right? Maybe longer. I think he did his first USAPL <laughs> meet in in two, late 2012 or early 2013. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe longevity is part of it. Uh, he's been you know, in there for a few years, and he's he's uh, <clears throat> what you're hoping is he's following the rules. And a lot of the other guys that have been in there now they're kind of locked into this federation too, because the federation doesn't really allow you to mingle right. around too much. They don't want at you all. being. You can't even have a coach. They don't want you to be in uh, other contests where other people may be tested positive and things of that nature, right? Yeah. That's, I think it's the rule, I right? think that's um, what I <coughs> read or found out. I think that's a WADA rule or a USA. Yeah. And they uh, just it's not IPF. Yeah, they, but since they follow that, that's the rule because yeah. that's the rule in you know IFBB, which right. we looked up. IFBB has similar rules. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then NFL and everywhere so we're else. We're trying to tell you that you're banned because you're <laughs> <the> super training. <laughs> and just by being here on the show. I see that on the internet a lot, and uh, you know you're, you're banned if you lift here or there. Right. And it's you're right; it is a water rule, and there's a lot of misconception about it because so obviously we have the USAPL, which is the international affiliate of the IPF. Yeah. The USAPL doesn't ban you if you you know lift in a non-tested or lift against a suspended lifter. It's, it's gotcha. where the IPF comes in. Gotcha. Uh, where you're, so and you then, can lift the USAPL nationals yeah, yeah. and everything. And it has nothing to do with steroids. It has to actually only do if you got caught with steroids. So although Mark was in a documentary uh, eight years ago, uh, he has never tested positive, so he can coach as many IFP, IPF lifters as he wants, correct? Correct. Yeah. That's Which is all, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not that it's right, wrong, or whatever. It's just interesting. I think, you know, the, the issue is that <clears throat> steroids are maybe just doing something different than what people maybe. originally expected and thought that they did. They clearly make you gain weight. So if Blaine, it was... 270 it'd be a lot harder to lift the same amount of weights that you're lifting yeah and a lot of times some guys can't do it without you know using some of that a lot you know using performance enhancing drugs and food and whatever else yeah. they can get their hands on to kind of bulk up um but when you look at some sports it's becoming more clear in powerlifting that maybe people don't really have to use it yeah. to be competitive, right? Because we're seeing world records, all-time world records being broken by guys that don't use stuff. Um, and even the lighter weight classes, the guys are Tons. very strong. They're going nuts. Um, there's still there's still a little gap when it comes to the actual like total yeah. uh, and, and stuff and, like that in the lighter weight classes. But you can't go into a sport like bodybuilding and compete. There's just no, there's no yeah. possible way. So... Steroids are going to add muscle to you. They're going to add weight to you. They're not automatically going to make you exponentially that much stronger. And they also don't make you stronger 
exponentially over time. It's it's something that you use and it makes you stronger for that period. And it doesn't like just add up. It doesn't continually like yeah. add up. It's, yeah. it's Unless your training that, continues to push, 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 right? But then it's your yeah. training pushing the results. Yeah, and it could be a combination of yeah. things at that point. And of course, they, they I'm not yeah. going to ever say that they don't help. They help a fucking ton. And anyone who takes them, <laughs> anyone who takes them is going to get stronger. Yeah. They're going to lift more weight. I mean, there's no doubt. But somebody who deadlifts, say, like 770, I'm not going to use them and all of a sudden have yeah. the ability to deadlift 800. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they used them for six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks and trained really hard, the main contributing factor to them going from 770 to 800 would be their actual training. Yeah. I do think uh, <clears throat> ceiling, kind of what you're talking about on the internet, does play a role. I remember probably before I was at Super Training, uh, I used to watch Ben Rice on YouTube. And Ben Rice was, uh, uh, I think at that time, competed in a lot of different federations. Um, uh, APA and USAPL and everything that he could find and he was like the 198 guy that pulled 7 and he was like the only <laughs> 198 guy that pulled 7 Beast. and I was yeah. probably pulling 5 you know 540 or something at the time and I'm looking at that like fuck that bro like I'm gonna do that you know <laughs> yeah. and then and then Bryce Lewis pulled 7 and then uh, you know guys like Johnny Candido all these guys are coming out pulling 650 and 7 I'm like well fuck that it's time for me to pull 7 you know right w- whereas the internet's not there and I'm you know, squeaking out 550, I'm like, all right, maybe I'll pull six one day. Yeah. Right? So it does kind of open your mind. I think that part of the problem is that people have a a percentage or a, a weight right. amount or whatever in their mind that steroids are going to add yeah. to each yeah. and every lifter, which is yeah, twenty percent. Yeah, yeah which is completely wrong. And the other thing is that every single sport that's a sport has a genetic component to it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think people the, don't want to admit in yeah. powerlifting. They, I one, I think I brought this up on the podcast one, or excuse me, on Twitter one time, but I said like, uh, like hard work does not beat genetics. Like, it just fucking doesn't. No. And then people are yeah. tweeting back, like, what about Jerry Rice? What about... I was like, Jerry fucking Rice <laughs> already has genetics on me. Yeah. Yes, he worked hard. If you have the same genetics, of course the guy that's going to work hard is going to be the guy that doesn't right. work hard. Yeah. But genetics are, are the ultimate rule. Like, it's yeah. the end-all, be-all. Oh, and maybe uh, Jerry Rice's genetics are that he is durable. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe yeah. that's a big part right. of it. Like, he doesn't yeah. get sick, and he's able to train his ass off, you know, because yeah. his training was a big part of it. But yeah. maybe just... For whatever reason, his grandpa was a badass, right. and he's got some great durability. And who's right? to say that uh, genetics don't play a role in his work ethic? Right. right. You know, we don't know right. these things. Like, they, mm-hmm. these are, like, science that we don't know, you know, nature versus or, nurture. You know, everyone says it's a combo, but we don't really know, like... Mindset, whatever. Like, I would say that, you know, they talk about if 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 people have good genetics, but they don't, but they don't actually work on it. Well... The desire to work on stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. is probably genetic too. And, and there's know? tons of cases of professional sports, NFL, NBA, whatever, where guys literally genetics take them to million dollar contracts. You hear like that guy's lazy. He never shows up to practice. He still got ten million for a year. Yeah, you know, like I'm working really hard in the gym. <laughs> I'm not going to the NFL yeah. getting ten million. Yeah, it's not well. <clears throat> Things have changed with the internet. Like everybody can do everything now. Yeah, everybody that's can be what it seen is. for everything. But they think that everybody should have the same opportunity to uh, to achieve the high level. That's what and it it's is. It's not true. You're busting their <laughs> yeah. bubble. It's just of hope. not true. <laughs> like no, n- not everyone's going to deadlift 750. Right. No. Yeah, it's just not. Po- I don't care how fucking hard you work, what drugs you take. You're not gonna. You're not gonna pull 750. Sorry, little guys. Yeah. <laughs> It's just not going to happen. <laughs> you little, little skinny bastard. It's just not going to work for everybody. Some of you might, but not everybody will. Yeah. And yeah. that's a hard pill for some people to swallow. Blaine, what's a big motivating factor for you? What are you, what are you like, focused on, and what gets you excited about training? Um, just beating my own numbers. Just wanting to Yeah, wanting just to getting improve. better. Yes, exactly. Getting better one day at, one day at a time. You're, so you said your focus right now is uh, – the reason why you're not messing around with raw is because right. you have a focus with, and I think this is important. It's an important topic because we see so many people lose focus. Um, Mike uh, was going to do a meet. He hurt his back. He had this goal to do 705 uh, deadlift for years, and rather than like losing his focus, he just refocused. Like, all right, my back hurts. I suck. I'm not going to compete. This is fucking worthless. I'm gonna f- now. I'm gonna. You know, I'm going to refocus my energy towards something else. And so he, you know, refocused, gained a little bit of weight, went after the 705 deadlift and knocked it out. And so with what you're doing, I see a lot of people, they start chasing conflicting goals. You know, they'll say, oh, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to go raw. Then I'm going to drop weight and then I'm going to do 308 and I'm going to do a 20 pound weight. You'll never achieve the shit that you're trying to achieve. So. You know what keeps you uh, on that path, and kind of like, what is the ultimate goal? That's a 
That's a great question, first of all. <laughs> Very valid point. And I was like the little squirrel chaser there. For, <laughs> I, I fucking do it all no, the time. No, we're all guilty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So quick little story on my background. 2012 was the first year that IPF had Raw World Championships. Mm -hmm. um, I won it that year. I tore my hip labrum at that meet. Ooh. And I, at that time, I loved raw lifting. I was like, raw lifting is the way to go. <laughs> um, at the time, the IPF um, competition was in the uh, equip side. So I tore my hip labrum, um, got frustrated. Putting that squat suit on was the only thing that helped my hips. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, there were some absolute monsters on the equip side. Carl Ingvar Christensen, Andre Konovalov. That guy's like, what, 380 or something? Carl, yeah. Right? Yep. He's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so used the gear to help keep my hips healthy. And at the same time, I loved raw lifting. Big part of my heart wanted to do raw. So I was bouncing back and forth for a while, mm -hmm. um, being injured. End of 20, so 2012 through 2015, I was bouncing back between raw and equipped. And it was bad. I mean, I do raw nationals, equipped worlds, raw worlds. You did it all on one weekend, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arnold? Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck's that? Yeah. What do you think weekend. you're a triathlete or something? <laughs> 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 So wait a second. You, you do, so normally in a power team meet, you do nine lifts, right? Right. How many lifts did you do on this weekend? Did you do uh, eighteen, or did you you did a bench only, or yeah, something? Yeah, I did too, twenty-one. Right? I did two full meets and a bench only. <laughs> well, how, how many lifts did you make? Uh, I think I went nine for nine raw, and then my equip stuff is always like three for nine or four yeah, for yeah, nine. Yeah. So, but you didn't bomb out. I didn't bomb out. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's nuts. So, yeah, and then so I was bouncing back and forth. Uh, End of 2015, I set the IPF Raw world record for the total, which at the time was 2210, which since raised killed. <laughs> but at end of 2015, I was like, all right, I've won a Raw Worlds. I've got the the Raw world record for the total. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm killing myself going back and forth. Right. There was some monsters on the equip side, like Carl Ingvar Christensen. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm going to quit being distracted, quit him. worrying about raw, and just focus my training on equipped, getting better in the gear, and uh, try and go to, to that side in battle. What's what's that like, you know, uh, when you travel? Because uh, I never had the luxury of, of traveling to some of these, like, big international competitions. What is that like when you, you know, you're training really hard, you know, you're, it seems like you work out by yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, there's other people around the country and other people around the world, you know, doing the same. Everyone's kind of everyone's that that's competing in that event is training just as hard you know it's like a rocky five montage yeah and then yeah and then you and then you, and then you kind of meet up with these guys you know you meet up with these monsters uh what is that like it must be inspiring to it must be like a little frustrating <laughs> on some points because some guys are just so you know genetic genetically gifted along with you know there's, there's, there's crazy strength levels and stuff like that but it's got to be motivating right right yeah, you see guys, you see guys, you know, pulling over eight and squatting over nine and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's takes you some pretty cool places. Yeah, um, been to Australia twice, all over Europe, Saint Croix recently. Yeah, when you last year, uh, where was IPF Worlds at? Luxembourg. Oh, okay, cool. Um, How's some of that uh, like funding work? To talk maybe business and stuff. Does the you know, because there's a big push and always talk about powerlifting going to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about, you know, IPF being our Olympics as of now. Uh, do you have to fly your own ass over there? Uh, so, yeah, in the IPF, especially in the USAPL, um, we're not funded. Um, I'm really fortunate. I have some good sponsors, uh, Concrete Supplement Company. Oh, cool. They, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, they, they help you out. Yeah. So I've, I've probably done two, three international meets and mm -hmm. four – national meets a year and haven't had to pay anything so they cover that what that's about great. other countries that's great like your uh, opponents do they get funded yeah know? so the big big time countries in the ipf like russia ukraine poland um their their powerlifting teams are actually funded by the government so their their travels yeah. covered do they get punt, uh, paid monthly similar to an uh, olympian y yeah i believe so because you all their you know professions is their yeah. their trainer at yeah. this gym so yeah and they mm. get like a whatever stipend yeah I'm sure it's not, you know, they're not making a ton of money, but they're getting to get paid and have they a, get some food and a roof maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What's your actual training like? Cause I see all these videos of you training by yourself. Uh, <laughs> he just and, told me in the gym, this and, is going to kill and, you. And you, and you <laughs> acting like a goddamn maniac too by yourself, which is, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, how do you get, how do you get all this done by yourself? Let's go layout of the gym. Like you told me, and then we'll go into maybe more, uh, X's and O's of training. All right. All right. So <laughs> got the, uh, Oklahoma city. Brewhouse Barbell. There's a shout out. <laughs> oh. um, awesome facility. It is gigantic. I'm terrible square feet. Maybe 5,000 square feet. It's There's huge. beer in there, though? 
funny story. So <laughs> it used to be an actual brewery. Oh, that's pretty uh, cool. And uh, yeah, big just some history. Metal, yeah, cool. Um, it's awesome equipped. There's I think five like Rogue Power Racks, a bunch of competition benches, cool. platforms, turf, prowlers, all that jazz. We gotta visit this spot. And yeah, then, yeah it sounds cool. <laughs> and then you got the the Gorillas Jungle. It's <laughs> little maybe half the size of this room. <laughs> What those, those he just eyebrows. works out in a closet by himself. <laughs> That's great. And uh, just close the door, get in my zone, <laughs> get after That's it. Awesome. He like works out in the stretch room with the, <laughs> the ER rack all by himself. <laughs> the uh, what are those big like drum looking things that are like I guess there to spot you? Like what are yeah? Those, where the hell did you get those things from? Is that the the gym has those or you bought those? Um, all that stuff in the back room is mine. The the rack, the weights, and see I had I've been trying to train with a thousand pounds every week by myself and i was right. like i'm probably gonna die at some point so <laughs> not gonna be good yeah <laughs> my mom won't be happy <laughs> so well the funny thing is 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 like if you think about it if you got one guy right to help you that wouldn't help because that guy would probably get hurt <laughs> and you'd probably get hurt you but both might get hurt worse than if you're just to dump the weight off your back right like yeah. one guy's not gonna be able to do yeah. anything anyway and if any if you had two or three guys <laughs> no, no chance. a thousand pounds if you go down quickly then no one's gonna be yeah. able to really do much anyway so that's pretty, pretty those wild. things are awesome like i i drew it up i don't have skills i can't weld but i took it to a fabricator it's like i need this oh they're custom yeah no, that's really cool and i was like i need them to freaking support like a thousand how heavy are those things they're massive they're, they're probably, monsters <laughs> they're probably a real bitch to move yeah on. Need to, the next model needs to have wheels <laughs> yeah. that is but, pretty cool though uh you but, know because like even straps uh uh in a, a rogue rack or something they'll bend a bar yes um they're, they're kind of a bitch to set the height Your fingers or hands could get in the way tons we've had that at meets uh with mm-hmm. with safety straps on a monolift and stuff but yeah. something like that maybe that is the next level of uh safety and powerlifting i think it should be i mean you're yeah. a what an engineer or some shit maybe, yeah maybe we make this happen and slingshot spotters <laughs> there you go. and they're adjustable in height too right so yeah. i oh, change nice. it for squat for bench yeah. you can change it for a different you lifter. use it for like a pin press or something and that's if you wanted the beauty thing about it too is like the plate set down on it instead of the bar. Yeah, so yeah, you do yeah. pin presses now or the, pin squats. And you, do, totally and you don't bend the field. bar. Exactly. Now, the, the ER rack has something for bench, but doesn't have anything for squat, right? Right. Okay. And even for bench, uh, I've seen those things flip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's got it caught on something and it flipped. Yeah. And you can catch your pinky in them if you, yeah. Get, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can get fucked up with those. That's things. interesting. Because <laughs> there's a lot of controversy on that, too. You know, IPF uh, Raw Nationals uh, or, yeah, uh, Raw International, whatever, Worlds. Yeah. People weren't very happy with some of the spotting. Why are you training by yourself? You have no <laughs> friends, or what's going on? Uh, I'm an asshole. <laughs> That's fair. That's very apparent. That's, from the first time we met, he comes uh, up. He comes up to me. He's like, "You are so much uglier in person." I turned around. <laughs> Never seen him before in my life. And I was like, I was like, laughing my ass. I knew your great. personality. I was like, hopefully he laughs at this. Oh my god, god. Great. I don't get punched it right now. The best introduction to somebody I ever had in my this life. This dude's about great. to hand me like three thousand in cash, and I just said that he was ugly. <laughs> That's true. Your money. He's gorgeous, uh, though. Yeah. <laughs> what about the actual uh, programming of training? So you said you were kind of doing raw and geared for a long time. Um, now your focus is uh, single ply lifting, uh, but how much work of that is done raw? And uh, maybe what's like your frequency of the lifts during a week? Uh, so the past probably three and a half years up until this training cycle that I started for Worlds, I trained four days a week. I did a squat, a bench, and a deadlift variation every day. Like heavy, heavy variation too, you know, like a, a safety squat. Four bar. days a week of each. Of each, yeah. Um, I loved it. It was fun because I, I love squatting, benching, and deadlifting. Yeah. So every day I got to go in like I'm squatting, benching, and deadlifting today. <laughs> um, and so I'd prioritize my lifts, right? So like the first movement of the day, whatever I was going to do, that's like my priority one lift. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Um, so it would be a like a – energy into it. Exactly. High frequency, higher volume, daily undulating kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this training cycle for Worlds, I've, I kind of – have gone to a more traditional thing where I got a squat day, two bench days, and a deadlift yeah. day. Um, it gets tricky because, I mean, I'm trying to f- not focus on raw, but it's like I can't not train raw. I can't just yeah, yeah, suit would, up yeah, or shirt just, up and uh, be like, ah, I don't care what happens to my raw. Yeah, in training, just a couple of days ago, you squatted 915 or something in, in training, right? Uh, raw? Eight, 871 okay. raw. And it was like, the fastest I've moved it. So Yeah, and then you went up to, what, 1,000 something too in your suit or whatever it was? Yeah, 1,047 that day. <laughs> When you were doing um, all lifts four days a week, were like one day raw, or was it like back off sets were raw, or warm up sets were raw, or anything like that? Um, no. So my priority one lifts were always my equip lifts. So like on day one, it was equip squat, 
and then some kind of raw bench variation, okay. raw deadlift variation. And when you're equipped, it's just competition style, I'd imagine, just with the regular bar. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep. Uh, what about when you do some of the variations? Are you ever wearing equipment for any of that? Like you wear a squat suit with the straps down or anything like that? or N- No. I've Just raw, just uh, yeah. knee sleeves or something. Yep. Belt. That's yep. pretty much it. How weird do your uh, variations go? They stay pretty specific, like pin press, you know, variation, varying heights, pin press, um, right. pin squats. Sometimes you know, a front squat or safety squat bar. So it's a um, variation of a lift that, that almost anybody else would be able to mimic. Exactly. They don't Maybe need a, a lot of yeah, yeah. special equipment. Deficit right. pole, block pole, something e- like yep, that. Exactly. Just moving from some different spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did we What did we see him do? A nine? He pulled 900 pounds off the ground. I already yelled at him about that. I was like, why didn't she just finish the lift? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike got under my skin already <laughs> i was like man i mean i'm not that great of a like a lockout guy either i told him i had a lot of issues with that but if i get it moving that fast i'm gonna try to lock that bitch out at least try but imagine that instagram video yeah that's it's, so many likes it's frustrating man i hate it i hate it it's like i could pull i don't know how much i could pull up to my knees at 900 was super fast but it's like i can hardly lock out 800 so it's mm. But what have uh, you tried to do to fix that, and what do you think works or will work to kind of fix that lockout in the sumo, which is uh, stereotypically uh, the opposite. Right. Everyone says sumo's slow off the ground, um, and everyone says lockout in sumo so easy. If you get it moving, you're going to lock it out. Uh, but I've had a similar issue uh, for than you in both my conventional and my, and my sumo. Yeah. My theory, at least at this point, which, I mean, I should probably kick myself because <laughs> ever since I started deadlifting, that's how it's been. Like conventional sumo, whatever. I can rip it up and can't lock it out. So at least my theory has been that I have like my glutes aren't awake. Maybe my hip flexors are tight because even doing like a glute bridge or something, I can't, I can't get into that extension. Yeah. So it's like anything that I can lock out in a deadlift, it's got to be something I can pull so fast that it just, the momentum carries it up. So glute work is what I've been trying to right. to work on. It hasn't really worked, but. <laughs> well, I think that is true. Uh, when you're as big as you are, you end up, even just standing differently than your average person because you have just so much body weight. You have so much weight on you. And a lot of times bigger guys, their knees will be bent a little bit. Typically, a lot of times their their posture would be a little bit forward. Especially saggy. For, saggy especially, posture. <laughs> yeah. Especially uh, when you're training a lot, your shoulders get tight and everything kind of gets a little forward. And then your hip flexors are tight. And you're absolutely correct. And I think... Uh, you're onto something by by training, you know, training your butt basically to try to get your your hips to come through on those lifts. I think what ends up happening ultimately is a lot of times when somebody is, even though you're six two six three, you end up making yourself squatty because you're so you're so big, you built up so much mass. And what ends up happening is a lot of the guys that are squatty have to pull the weight up a little higher. Uh, than most of the other guys. You know, you yeah. pull the weight up all the way up to your dick, and other guys, <laughs> well, it depends on where your dick's hanging down to, I guess. <laughs> but uh, a lot of other guys... Your mileage like, may vary. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. A lot of other guys might pull it just to, like, mid-thigh and something like that, you know what I mean? A mid-dick. Mid, <laughs> mid, mid-leaner. <laughs> We're watching some videos of the big man uh, busting out some of these squats, and uh, what's going on with the chalk, the uh, ultimate warrior? Chalk? I was going to say, um, that's what it looks like. So, without mentioning any three-letter acronyms certain federations and people don't like expression of self so right. uh, uh i like to do everything i can to uh, to uh you within know the rules with, to, to to liven it up a little yeah, bit yeah, right yeah, yeah. I, yeah i will go ahead and take credit everyone's wearing the headbands now oh, yeah, i yeah. believe i was the first person in the ipf to uh start rocking the headbands this is this is uh 100 percent. look how much prettier i am than him oh, not even close God, you're look at that, look at that ugly there. smile <laughs> He likes guys. It's the eyes, though, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, you know, 100% what makes powerlifting great is, uh, you know, the individuals. And that's what yeah. you want to see. And, and, like, you know, something like uh, the UFC does a great job of interviewing people and, and, and getting the point across of these individuals. We've talked about this many times here on the podcast where you watch the Olympics and they got some heartfelt story yeah. about somebody. You know, if, if, if powerlifting was done the same way, you know, we would go to Oklahoma and we would yeah. we would film you at your at your house and we'd film you at your job and we'd film you, you know, inside this eight hundred square foot spot that it was that you fucking built your own drums and spent Good fat little Andy. Uh, three you hug that, you hug that little whatever, kid? <laughs> whatever it is you spent. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah little Andy. Fat little Andy. <laughs> and you spent all this uh, of your own money, uh, you know, on all this equipment, you know, just to do this sport that doesn't really no end up paying you a whole lot but uh it's for self-improvement it's for just making yourself better 
And if powerlifting can get to that spot, that would be the next level. Yeah. Uh, powerlifting, I think, is already a couple steps back where, uh, again, all my opinion, hate me or love me, the individuals aren't that individual and they're not that unique. You know, that's just kind of the, sometimes the There's mentality. There's not enough of them that are. Yeah. There's not yeah. enough characters in our sport. Mm-hmm. So then for, and I think it's a lot of federations um, that. He's trying to say y'all a bunch of dumb motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, the, but then for us not to. Uh, ass motherfuckers. For us not to. Uh, you know, promote and uh, be proud of some of the characters that we do have, I think is a negative thing. Yeah. Uh, like Mark said, like the NBA is Steph Curry versus LeBron. And then you have Tom Brady versus Peyton Manning. Like you have to build stories if you want the sport to grow, if you want any kind of hype, if you want any kind of, yeah. uh, you know, and, and it's got to let people express. It's only yeah. going to be led by the individuals. It's going <laughs> to be led by us. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's fucking awesome that, 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 that's the reason. It would be cool if it was a story about your aunt passing away too, but I think it's cool that you're just doing it because you're fucking doing it. You know, mm-hmm. that's like what we do. Like, well, Mike, what do you live for Instagram? Because I fucking want people to watch me on Instagram. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be stupid. Like, why do you have a podcast? Because we want people to listen to or us talk like, oh, for an you hour. You do yeah. that to be famous. Like, <laughs> like yes. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, It feels so, good. Oh, so you put chalk on your face it. for attention? <laughs> yeah, you stupid fuck. Guilty? I do. <laughs> like, that's, that's okay, I think. You know, like, yeah. it's not okay when you uh lie about the reason behind it yeah Yeah. you know but if you're just yeah like fuck you dude i'm gonna yell and scream so people in the gym look at me like fuck you you look very (laughs) hefty in this video i might add i mean camera what's the uh what's the uh how many cameras (laughs) deviation in your conventional the sumo pole they're they're literally about identical and Mm -hmm. the suit the suit makes me feel better i've the longest time my prs have always been raw but yeah, I mean the suit's not helping it lock out. So you just got to so. figure out that Great, lockout. Huh? Yeah, you just got to figure out that lockout and then pull nine fifty. I would, I think that'll happen. I would love that if I can just get those hips to come through. Uh, do you do any specific glute work since you think that's the issue? Are you doing like glute hip thrusts and shit? Or um, it's, it's some of that stuff I find so hard because I mean my problem is my low back takes over, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. You know, you trying to do a, finish with a lockout and the deadlift and my low back. We got the over. same issues. So, yeah, I'll show you what I've been doing. Okay. I don't know if it works or not. So I've had to find like <laughs> embarrassingly light stuff that I would tell my yeah. grandma to do, like lay on a physio ball and like literally just squeeze your glutes yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's reverse hypers, all that stuff. Aww. Oh, look at that's us. How cute are we? And that's when I think I said the fact ugly. Hug. Yeah. It's the salad bowl hat. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> that was great. He, he grabbed the microphone and started talking. And he said something about me being ugly or being pretty or something like that. It was great. Uh, then he tried to apologize later. I was like, no, man, that was funny. I loved it. <laughs> I mean, you're just all over all over the internet. You, you kind of think you know somebody, right? Like, yeah. you get the personality. Yeah, sure. I'm like, yeah. he's going to think this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he doesn't take offense to it. We, we get that a little bit. That too happens. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, for somebody, uh, somebody within the community, then it's totally fine. You could do or say whatever. Like, yeah. call it, grab me and say, hey, what's up, you fucking asshole? Yeah, some guy, <laughs> I don't uh, care at all. But On the downtown streets of L.A., <laughs> yeah. I'm walking to the Fit Expo from our hotel. Um, and some random kid grabs my hand and tries to hold my hand across the street. That's probably the weirdest thing. That, <laughs> that was the weirdest thing, yeah. Yeah, Mike was pretty upset about that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, and, and I was like filming myself at the time, like, I said, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I tried to like make it a joke, but I wasn't joking. <laughs> Have you had any, so uh, you know, you're training by yourself or <clears throat> watching a, a YouTube video right here of you uh, walking out a big old squat and um, you got your knees wrapped and everything. Is is there ever anybody else that's helping you with anything, or is it, are you hundred percent loading the weights and doing everything by yourself? <laughs> so uh, for the longest time, like a minion or two. <laughs> for the longest time, I was doing hundred percent everything by by myself, loading the bars, putting the gear on. Uh, now I've got a guy who comes in and wraps my knees on Mondays, um, so that's a big help. I mean, cool. for I had squatted eleven hundred in training, wrapping my own knees. That's nice. But uh, is it just a guy that that maybe you help with training or something like that, or just a friend, or just just a friend who? lifts two cool. and then uh you let them use your bar or no no one touches the bar <laughs> nobody touches the bar <laughs> and uh no one gets into the room unless daddy's there either <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> got the chain lock on it um and then i got a guy who comes and gives me lifts off lift offs on the when i have the bench shirt on mm. but i think i saw maybe uh some spotters in one video like uh two a spotter on each side when you benched maybe that was yeah uh, that nine fifteen, yeah so my my lift off guy that's went kinda, to one that's side. That's kind of being a pussy, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> so you have somebody lift off in the middle, just like kind of like a normal thing. Yeah, and you got uh, some side guys every once in a while. Yep. 
Do you get uh, some sort of safety? Right? Uh, three man lift off in the IPF or no? That's yeah, not allowed. I, I think you can. You can, but I never do it because yeah, yeah. if you have your own guys there who do it in training, you know they'll of course, get it right. But used to it. Yeah. You got two guys yeah. who've never given a side lift off. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. that happens a lot. Not going to be good. <laughs> yeah, it gets to be. It gets to be really uh, out of control quickly. Um, how much how much money did you pour into all this stuff? You don't mind me asking. You, I mean, it looks like you have kilo plates. You got a you know a, a, an Ivanko bar and you got custom balls. fucking side spotters. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be you know uh, automatically thinking just the amount of kilo plates you need. I'm thinking you got eight grand sunk yeah. into that. Shit. Yeah, Something easy. Like that. Yeah, and it's I mean it's kind of like what you were talking about earlier. It's our sports not <clears throat> prolific like <clears throat> these other ones, but right. we. I mean, lifting and lifting more weight is the thing I care most about in my entire life. And, right. you know, people look at it as a hobby. And but your I, girlfriend. <clears throat> fiance. Oh, and your fiance. That's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her and lifting. That's right. <laughs> and then it's uh, her lifting and then fishing. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Where's so we food, say, we where's food say come into this thing? That's just a given. Uh, all right. <laughs> Fair. Different category. <laughs> Man, you're fast. Whoa, look at those Whoa. panties. Oh, yeah. I see like camouflage this, underpants. Or I was just trying to dispel some of the equipment rumors with this video, right? Because like <laughs> I put the suit on myself. I wrap my uh, knees by myself. Okay. And it's like I don't even wear a tight suit. I wrap my own knees. And so I'm just showing like you yeah. can do it by yourself. It's no big deal. Are those a special edition Sumner undies? They're uh, the super training undies. camo undies. Yeah, actually. coming out soon. Okay, here's your question about the bar, Mike. It's oh, the yeah. same bar. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, what's going on with that red tape on IPF bars? What um, the hell it's is just, that? It's just a, a sticker that says Elico, I, IPF approved. And no Elico one takes bar. it off? It's kind of like the wrappers with the sticker on their hat. It's, it's actually <laughs> super hard to take off. I think they uh, make it so like you can't take it off if you want to. Because I always see it's like, it. It might be like an industrial sticker or something. Yeah. Oh, shrugs too. Uh, oh, make a, I know you got. I know you want to say something he's about that. Rubbing, <laughs> rubbing that bar on his dick. Yeah. Pretty good. I think just popping this yeah. video just went 3D for a second. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of knuck there. All of a sudden, yeah. that was a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, that just made my morning. I'm ready. Favorite, that's his favorite exercise. Yeah. <laughs> the dick rub. How do you get these workouts done? I mean, it seems like you know when you were just mentioning that you. Bench squat, deadlift, some variation, uh, almost every single day. I would imagine for somebody of your strength level that that would workout would take forever. Yeah, it literally takes four hours. I mean, I've <laughs> I've pushed everything out of my life except my job and training. Right. To, to how does your job that. allow for that? Do you do you do this like early in the morning? You do this at night, or is it just? I uh, go at night. I work from like six a.m. to four thirty p.m. and go to the gym for four hours. Dang. Go home and sleep. Drink a chicken get shake. Done, you get done. Yes, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> well, uh, you get you get done with work, and uh, and then what do you you know when you get done with work? The hell kind of he's dominatrix the, shit you got going on right now. He's got. Oh, the, it's a uh, front squat harness on the yeah. back. Why well, a front squat harness on the back? Yeah, Your back hurts. See, see, no, I'm I'm super weird. So like squatting all the time, right? It variation. kills my elbows. Oh, yeah. and, and that so thing I, helps. It allows me to do a back squat, yeah. but I don't have any weight on my hands. So That's it, interesting. I've never uh, seen anyone do that. I don't think. I don't either. At, when you're done with work, you get some food in, then hit the gym, and then <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just taking sh shakes all day. Right. Go straight to the gym. Do you have any sort of regimen with your food, or you just sort of eat whatever? I drink whatever. Eat and I, drink whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, you've probably seen the chicken shakes and the sweet potato shakes. That's about eighty percent of my yeah. Let's let's get into that a little bit. So, do you have a specific uh, calorie intake that you're trying to reach, or are you just try to eat a lot? I just try to eat a lot, but my it's my not really day, counting it or anything. Yeah, I mean, my day is so structured, and I I like structure. It's same thing, same time every day. I eat the same stuff. So, so then you know, it, it yeah. pretty much is. Yep. Actually, a lot of a lot of bodybuilders do that too because. Uh, they you, they try to get used to the same foods, so mm -hmm. so nothing's a surprise. Nothing's sitting in your stomach forever because you ate something, you know, you ate a burrito that you don't normally eat uh, before you train or something like that. But um, let's talk about these shakes a little bit. Um, he got a chicken shake. He got a sweet potato shake. What the hell's going on with all this stuff? <laughs> uh, it's just all about efficiency. I mean, I, surprisingly for weighing three eighty, three eighty five, I don't have a big appetite to eat. You know, right. I, I couldn't sit yeah. there all day and chew what I need to to maintain my weight. Right. And so I first started with the chicken shakes and the pound stone chicken. Pound, that's the yeah. first time I saw it many years ago. Yeah. And then I need to get the calories or the carbs in. So, yeah, sweet Derek potatoes. Poundstone, a uh, world famous uh, professional strongman athlete, was doing the chicken shakes. And then before that, I don't know if you know the backstory, but 
before the chicken shake was the tuna shake. <laughs> oh. yeah. But his uh, mercury count went way too high. <laughs> so he had to stop with the tuna shakes and go, uh, that and go to so chicken. That sounds so gross. So what the hell is in the chicken shake? Uh, ground chicken breast. So I buy ground chicken breast from the store. Cooked, right? I cook it, yeah. But ground, it makes it so much easier to cook and then like weigh out. Mm-hmm. So I, oh, I, yeah, I cook yeah. 40 pounds at once. Wait in the bags, freeze it's ground it. Ground chicken breast, which can be really dry, right? Yeah, <laughs> but you put it in with some water, and it's all good. <laughs> Mix in some egg whites, some spinach, water, the chicken breast, blend it on up. I don't know if you've heard this podcast before, but yeah, I know this a is topic. A, this is a segue. Yeah, a topic we often talk about is poop. Uh, I don't even know where that came about. Mark likes poop a lot. I actually don't like poop that much, but like, uh, fuck, man, liquid egg whites, water, and dried chicken breast. You gotta shit yourself during one of these squats. Yeah, shit in a manhole. Cover? Yeah, what are you <laughs> shit in a bathtub somewhere? How many shakes a day do you have like that? Uh, so a chicken shake is one shake, and a sweet potato shake is the other. So I do three. Is this rounds carb of and that protein timing? Is this mad it's science? Just, it's, it, it, the shake is literally just chick, like chicken, egg whites, water, it's and spinach. Much, yeah, and that's how it. does that taste? Like chicken, <laughs> salt. <laughs> No, see, I I tried to like first time I tried to do it, I season season them up, yeah. and it just makes it way harder to drink. Oh really? You I, I would have like bullion or something. <laughs> you you just of, a little bit, just to give it you a have little some bit. Some sort of, of special blender or something, or is it just quality? Th- that is the key. Is this blender? I Let's get you a, a blender Blendtec. sponsorship right now. Yes, Blendtec. What's up? <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> when when it because some of these blenders, like I have I have a blender that will it will blend something so fast and so crazy that it will turn it into like soup. It'll make it literally make it hot. Does is yours hot, or you just drink it cold? Or uh, well, I, I make them the day before and then put them in the uh, fridge. So yeah. bring them to work with you. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> people at work think you're <laughs> think you're out of your mind. Absolutely, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And then the sweet potato shake is sweet potato and uh, put milk in that one, oh, and then peanut butter. That, <laughs> that one actually tastes oh, peanut good. butter. Peanut butter. Now you're yeah, talking. Yeah. yeah. Now you're talking more of a shake and less nope, of a food, liquid food. Sweet potato. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not I sure think, if he's retarded or if he's a chef. <laughs> uh, Alberto <laughs> Nunez, um, who is also in Colorado, uh, power lifter but pro bodybuilder, I think he takes sweet potato, kind of um, cuts it up or dices it a little bit, and then lays a Snickers bar on top. Oh. I mean, I could just blend up a Snickers that's bar, That's what too. I'm talking. Now we're talking. Yeah, you were thinking I about think blending up a Snickers bar? <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that so, looks good. Throw in a scoop of ice cream instead of the milk. Let's <laughs> get <laughs> creative here. Oh, there's a conventional pull. Right? Who's the guy who's super excited for you? Arian Kamishi. I think oh. that's how you say his name. That uh, was, yeah. That was to win Raw Worlds 2015, and I missed it. And Ray won, right? Right. Son of a bitch. <laughs> You're going to have to avenge that loss, buddy. I know. Need, world games need to come first. Yep. That's the goal. There's Big Carl. What is he squatting here? Like, a, like almost eleven or something? That's ten forty-seven right there. Oh, that's insane. Jeez. When you were coming onto the scene and you were seeing this guy, I mean, he was probably ahead of you at the time, right? Strength. Yeah. Wise. Yep. It's fucking crazy. And now you're now you're squatting eleven hundred pounds. <laughs> that's pretty wild. Uh, are you pretty secretive, or you have some uh, open goals for these next competition in four or five weeks? Numbers you want to talk about or not? Um, I mean, I've always got the numbers I want to talk about, but. Uh, <laughs> The number one goal is just to win Worlds. You know, the so the IPF you have to submit your roster and you submit nominations. And I'm way ahead on the nominations to win. Um, mm. There's a Ukrainian guy coming off a drug test suspension for three years. Right. But it, it's just one of those things. I just got to get lifts in to win. So that's the main goal. Get get lifts in. Uh, yeah. I guess that makes it a little easier when you have set goal to win. Uh, because then you don't have to hit. Technically, you never have to hit a PR on the, in that meet. I mean, you know, right? Like guys will push you, obviously, and maybe you will. Mm-hmm. Um, you might be able to get by just uh, strategy and sandbagging. Yep. Let's go back to that poop story. <laughs> oh boy, you have a poop story for us? You told me I was going to have to have one ready, <laughs> <laughs> so I do. All right, here we cover here your ears, babe. Let her, yeah. let her yeah. rip. <laughs> so, fishing is like my thing to do, Uh-oh. right? It's got to do with out by yourself. You can't get can't get through a toilet. It, yeah, actually. So uh, stuck on a boat, out, out on the lake by myself fishing. Right, I just consume all these shakes all the time. They, you know, just no sustenance. No, they're no right? going downhill. <laughs> yeah. So I'm out at the lake. I feel it coming on. Like, but you don't want to stop fishing. Like, <laughs> you 
that's your priority. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this, I mean, it's getting out of control. Like, my stomach's hurting real bad. <laughs> How long would it take you to get to a toilet anyway if you wanted to? Exactly. I would take like an hour across maybe. the lake. Yeah. So <laughs> you got a motor in the boat or I, yeah, you're rowing yeah, on it? Yeah. Yeah. You got a motor. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I zip across the lake to the ramp to, because, and then you got this long walk. You, like, I tie my boat up. You got this long walk from the ramp up the walk, up to the parking lot, to the porta potties. And like, at this point, I'm like sweating, trying to squeeze it <laughs> off. Like, this is not good. Good. This is not good. That's your and glute activation. I, <laughs> squeezing turds. That's right. Exercise. Maybe it wouldn't have been a big deal if I could lock a deadlift out. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, at this, I'm like, I'm hurting at this point. So I get the boat tied up, and I'm like, I look up to where the porta potty is. Like, I, I'm, I can't walk up there. Like, I won't make it. And so I drop trow right at the boat dock, and there's like this opening where you get off. And I just hang on the handles, and I just, like, <laughs> hang over the dock and do my deal. You and shit into the lake? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that illegal? I, it probably is. <laughs> there may be fish kill. I don't yeah. know. Do you still fish in that lake? <laughs> yeah, there's, like... I fish, but I don't swim or eat the fish from it. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you don't eat the fish... Someone's eating your shit fish right now. Someone fucking... Joke's on them. <laughs> Uh-huh. Which lake is this? In case yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> public service announcement. Avoid it. Yeah. It's uh, Lake of the Arbuckles in Oklahoma. Okay. I hope I don't get fined now. <laughs> Detoxify it. Yeah, you get a three hundred dollar bill in the mail. Uh, then Oop. my worry, the biggest fear was like I thought there was going to be families and stuff around, mm-hmm. but I I knew I couldn't make it up. So I was glad to get done and then like Family look around and there, like there wasn't people watching or. And you go back to fishing, I assume? You got to, man. You got, you got to want it. Hey, it's over at that point, right? You can just go back to what you were doing. I know uh, a little while back, you know, when, in the USAPL, when you're kind of coming on the scene, it looked like you're getting uh, red lighted quite a bit. Did you do anything to change that, or was it just kind of you sticking around for a little while and people getting used to seeing you lift? Yeah, it's probably probably. Both well, combination, um, like a little politic and maybe right, on. right, little money under the table, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dollars for white lights. Right. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, 20, uh, 2012, 2013, I bombed out of the. Um, I'm sorry, 2013, 2014, I bombed out of the Equip Nationals. Mm. I smoked six squats, all six turned down on depth, um, and that's Bastards. it. Sucks because yeah, that's, t- that's got to be rough. Yeah, that's probably way more common in uh, single. I, I haven't really watched and single gear, play yeah. IPF yeah. in general, but I know gear in general. Uh, it's way more common to bomb out. If you bomb out raw, often you're just making bad strategy moves. Yep. Uh, but single ply shit goes weird because there is mm-hmm. a, kind of an external factor of the gear. Yeah. yeah. Did you do anything different in your training to kind of make sure that doesn't happen again? Um, tried to be more strict about filming my squats from the side, okay. um, sending it to people that I trust, right. looking for accurate feedback. Um, Not Chad Wesley Smith. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. It just being honest with yourself. This is gross. Yeah. You know, sometimes even in this super training, we find chicken that. chicken like, shake thing is gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys don't want to be honest with their own depth or their own lockouts or their own, yeah. you know, uh, pause commands. Oh, if you're yeah, not you honest with yourself, yeah. uh, what do you think three judges that don't give a fuck about your total are going to be honest? Yep. Or really don't want you to get it. Yeah, I mean, no we, one gives a we shit. love seeing that. You know, when we post something up, somebody you know does a seven hundred five squat or something in here, and a bunch of people comment right away. Oh, I was high. You know, as if, as if we don't share that with the guy. You know, as if as if we have not been to a powerlifting meet ourselves. We obviously tell our lifters, hey, you know, and sometimes too, like it's just training. So the last thing I want to do a week or two before the meet is kill someone's confidence. If if they're squatting really high, then of course you have to say something because there's no way they're going to get to lift past. Yeah. But if it's a week before the meet, they'll say, hey, how'd it look? Look fucking great, man. Yeah, go yeah. kill it. <laughs> and then if they miss a lift in the meet because they, they didn't go low enough, hey, you got to go lower. Yeah. You know? But you know that's a, it gets to be a little bit of a, a touchy subject sometimes. And yeah, some guys get real personal. It was different when everyone was back in multiply. Yeah, yeah. gear is yeah different you, factor. Yeah, you had but, to lie. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But sadly, you know, raw. Some guys are like that too. You know, they'll try to cut it in, in regards to lifting more weight in the gym. You know, and I'm just not a big fan. No, that does not work. Are uh, you doing anything for mobility? I don't. Just, uh, just lift. It's train. Kind of same story. Like 2011, doing the football stuff. I just I was a monster on mobility and rehab. Right. And then time went on. I was you like, get uh, a, you get in a pretty good position though. And you're when you, I mean your squats are, are awesome, and then yeah. you get in a really good position for your deadlift. So it doesn't really seem to be yeah uh, too much of a limiting factor. I would say that if you worked on some mobility, it might actually help your help you lock your deadlift out more because you might be able to get underneath the weight a little bit better mm-hmm. from the very start yeah and some stripper I pole think, or stripper booty might help <laughs> i think i think a lot of times when the way that you start is is a big part of the way that you finish so what do i know about deadlifting but 
you might be able to get underneath the bar a little bit better and get a little bit better leverage. I know Shaw, you know, Brian Shaw works on his mobility mm-hmm. a lot. And uh, that guy's able to get in an awesome position at the bottom of his deadlift where you're like, fuck, I don't know how the guy's 6'8", 420, or whatever the fuck he weighs, <laughs> is able to... This this shake thing is... Do, do big guys lie about their weight? I feel like uh, guys in the middle lie about their weight, you know? Like yeah. we have guys that are 300... Like he's really 390? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at some point, I feel like you have to get uh, not self-conscious about it, but like even me in my head, like, yeah, god damn it. In my head, I'm 200 pounds, but I'm 220, you know? So what what are you in your head? 140? <laughs> no oh. man, I'm a big boy. <laughs> 145 pounds. That's where it all started, man. It is. It's fucking crazy. And then too many Snickers. Too many Snickers. And so you said your shakes. you said your dad um, did some uh, powerlifting. Mm-hmm. What are your parents like? Are they are they into you powerlifting and supportive? Yeah, they're super super supportive. Oh, that's cool. Except when. I miss a squat on depth, and my mom is going to have a Uh-oh. breakdown. She <laughs> she loves me. She worries. Yeah. She wants me to get my squats deep. How do you red light my baby? <laughs> yeah. Is she, ma- is she mad at you because you didn't go low enough? No. Or is she she's, mad at the judges? She, uh, she's not mad. She just yeah, she yeah. just wants me to get my squat fast. Right. That's cool. Does she understand it? Pretty yeah. good? Power yeah. 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 Because yeah. you're done. My mom doesn't know, have a clue what's going I on. Would, uh, I would just sick her on the judges. <laughs> she's. I think she's too sweet. Like you guys my dad would. You guys gave me a red light. You have to talk to my mom. <laughs> Why'd you do that to him? He's so sweet. He's such a nice boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, your dad, did he compete? Yep. Back, man, I, it was before I was born, so ni- 1980s, I guess. Okay. Um, you guys ever get a chance to lift together? Yeah, it's it's awesome. So when I first started doing meets, you know, on the local level and stuff, he'd, he'd do them with me. He still does. He, uh, he gets old and hurt and yeah he uh he had a, a funny I have no idea what that's like <laughs> he had a pretty funny joke the other i don't know a few months ago how old is he he is 62 or something oh wow he's pretty cool. strong yeah that's but great you know he, he was looking at the ipf the masters world records yeah. old guys and he's like you know if, if i can live another 30 years and not get much weaker i can <laughs> yeah, get yeah, some yeah, of yeah. these yeah. just outlive everybody yeah. out survive everybody and he actually he lives in vegas now and i think he goes and uh lifts the same gym as spoto and everything oh, sometimes oh, yeah. that's yeah. awesome very cool you have any siblings or anything? Any freaky brothers running around? I have an older brother. He's he's freaky in a different way, but he's <laughs> he's, he's not a big dude, but he's a badass. Yeah, yeah. Not into lifting? No, nope. no. Nope. He was Green Beret for a while. Oh, okay. Um, did like the the distance running type stuff. Yeah, but yeah, he's yeah. My height and like 180 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Different, but uh, still is insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you like to hunt also? Uh, you like fishing? Do you like hunting as well? I'm more of a fisherman. I don't really yeah. hunt, just fish. How often do you go fishing? Every weekend. Damn, really? <laughs> Every weekend. Wow. And you don't That's eat them? Cool. Or you don't eat them only in that one you took a shit in? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not when I took a shit in. Uh, he gives it to like his neighbor. Yeah. Like, You're going to love hey, this. Hey, got this awesome fucking cod for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a hobby that you've been into since you were a kid. Is that something you did with your dad, grandpa, something like that, or just got into it? Uh, yeah, dad. I mean, cool. It's just it's a good way to to relax, right? Hey, what do you do? Just sit on a boat by yourself, think, yeah. meditate, just cast yeah, those fish do it by yourself. Usually, yeah. I got I got a fishing buddy there in Oklahoma. I go with sometimes. I think I saw after maybe IPF Worlds, he went fishing. Yeah, I was right. in the, I was in Finland for Raw Worlds. And yeah, that was probably exciting, huh? That yeah. was probably a lot of fun for you to do that. It was, man. That was pretty cool. And you went with some other powerlifters or something? To, no, anybody I, else in I it? found a fishing guide there. <laughs> oh, okay. He was like the hillbilly hick version of a Swedish person. Or <laughs> person. He was awesome. That must have been kind of funny, huh? <laughs> that must have been cool. Great. Uh, so where's your next competition at? Next competition is in Orlando. It's the IPF Open World Championships, November 19th. Cool. You're going to run right into Silent Mike. He's going to enter a super heavyweight. I'll, ju- I'll go. I'll see what I can do in a single play suit. The way that deadlift's going, probably, probably going to have to. Never, you never know. Yeah. I can't start bench anything. Start but throwing on some power thing gear. <laughs> I'm not against that. I'm not against a single ply squat here and there. I've never really been in a single ply suit. Just like briefs, multiply briefs. But single ply suit's kind of fun. We talked a little bit about your training. You said you know that you're, you're switching things up a little bit. Um, is, it, is it partly due to like your strength level? You know, you going in squatting, bench, and deadlifting every day. Uh, you know the, the the amount of time that it takes to do that, and then also just kind of the wear and tear of doing something like that it is uh, what you switch to now. You you feel like it's going to be a little safer or a little quicker. Or why did you switch to um, training up? Not really safer or quicker. So when I was doing 
the three lifts, four days a week, it was so hard to get focused on even like a very specific lift. Like if, if one day I was doing my equip squat, which is my most important lift, and then I had to do, you know, a heavy bench variation, a heavy deadlift variation, it was hard to get 100% focused into that. And now I've really just like, my focus is equipped. I got to work on this. Gotcha. So I, I get less distracted. When you do those, those like raw pin presses or raw squats, like you, you want to do a lot of weight, you get focused on them. Right. <clears throat> so it kind of, you know, detracts a little bit from, from your focus. So right. I'm, like I go in, I got to get my, like you're determined to do it and everything, but like, it's just not there sometimes cause you're, you're asking yourself to almost do too much work. Exactly. Yeah. Basically. Was it more mental focus or was it actual physical too at that point? Um, I mean it was both, Yeah. but it's, Doing it like this now, it allows me to put more focus on my equip yeah, yeah. squat, my equip bench. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things like, uh, you know, after your deadlifts, uh, it'd be great to hammer out stiff leg deadlifts and bend over rows. But you can't. Like, you, you're fucking fatigued. You, you're, yeah. you did five sets of three or, or three sets of three or whatever it was you did for the day. And you're shot. And you, your grip is kind of gone. You can't really do much. So if you just wait two days later and then do yep. it then, but then you're kind of, you go back and forth because you're like, well, that's going you know, to work my lower yeah. back and it might affect my squat. <laughs> like, I think everyone's yeah, training with these situations, you know, personal or uh, obviously career goes in waves like that. You know, like a beginner can. You have to switch it around. You, know, you do three sets of five at 315 on deadlifts and then you can do bent over rows, stiff legs, chin ups uh, and hammy curls. Right. Mm -hmm. But then once you start to. You know, like even me, who's not that strong, like if I work up to 585 for a bunch of sets of three or five on deadlift, fuck, man, I'm going to squat a little bit and then maybe like back extensions and done or, or yeah. I'm too gassed. Pit shark, lat pull down, like yeah. almost machines. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. And point. even still, you know, like if it's a hard day, yeah. like you're like, fuck, dude, I'm going to deadlift and go home. Yeah, you're, you're like hands. <laughs> yeah, but, that, but then no maybe strength. A, but then maybe at the end, you know, like you're you're at the top now, but maybe it is time to do like. Uh, glute barbell uh, hip thrust right like we go from like super general to specific and then you kind of have to get general again because you mm -hmm. or, or weak point training yeah. or whatever you want to call it because you do have a, a glaring weakness perhaps in the glutes right? right where in the beginning you have a glaring weakness of everything mm -hmm. and then in the middle you have a glaring weakness of you're not a good power lifter that's some nice glutes <laughs> well that's what I told him like my glutes are pretty big but I think mine are weak too like they're just yeah. fucking all, all show no go back then <laughs> You gotta be able to turn them on. It's great for the great for the Instagram, not so great for my deadlift. Yeah, you gotta be able to turn them Fuck. on. Get them to flex. Fuck me. So you get really, really fired up for your lift for your lifts and uh Is that all the trend? Yes. Yeah. That's all that's what it is. Yeah. It's just trend. Okay, well that includes my over. question. Yeah. <laughs> um there's some controversy over that. You know, some people don't think that's the way to go in training. Some people think you're kind of asking your body to almost do too much. Um, some people, uh, you know, or even, you know, even say, don't do pre-workout, don't drink coffee, don't get yourself all fucking wound up because it's uh, nose tapping torque. too much into yeah. you know, adrenal nose fatigue. Torque. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and, you, and you do all that. You're just like, fuck it. I'm just going to be mean. I'm just going <laughs> to go nuts. Uh, what are some of your thoughts on that? And have you tried to calm your training down? And does it, any of that work for you? Yeah. So I hear that a lot too. And I know, a hundred percent without a doubt in my mind that the reason my squat is what it is because I can go and train like that constantly. Yeah. You're really calm as you're sitting in front of us now, <laughs> but when you go for that squat, I mean, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near you, you yeah, know, until, the gorilla you, cage until, seems you, until you hit, until you hit the lift and you were excited, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, I, you know, people will sit here and see what I am now, but I, I don't have, you know, a great build to, to squat. I got really long femurs, right. pretty tall. Um, and I was always, you know, super skinny and what, I sucked at squatting when I first started lifting right. and I was like, I don't want to suck. And it just became my mindset every week when I went in to go squat, I could just get the biggest adrenaline rush. Right. You know, you can have the best program in the world, but it, it's not going to matter. You just, you got to want it. You yeah. got to be super motivated. Big Ray gets fired up too. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets fired up and he, I even noticed that he got the crowd into it, you know, before he went. And I, I like that kind of stuff. I think that, you know, they've, they've done studies before. I think they, were, they did one with a UFC fighter where they, like, played music and he was, you know, punching a bag or whatever it was. Uh, they, and they did a bunch of other stuff. But they I think they either, even injected him with, like, adrenaline. They did a bunch of yeah, shit yeah, to yeah. him. Then the other thing they did was they, like, yelled personal shit at him. <laughs> yeah, got and, him fired up. And when he did that, when they did that, that is when he... Uh, Produce the most force, <laughs> and I think that that's what's kind of like. I don't know what's going through your head uh, before you lift, but a lot of times I, I draw upon like personal yeah. experiences <clears throat> and personal things of of just you know I'm gonna fucking stick it to people who've told me I couldn't do it and all, all that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. You kind of use that as your your rallying point, you know, and that and then you get fired up and fuck, go out there and do it. 
So if you if you pay close attention to the training videos, especially on the squat, you see off on the right there's a whiteboard, <laughs> right. and that right there is called the hate wall. Uh oh, people's Uh-oh. names Uh-oh. are on there. People's names, the wall of hate. What, what they've said, screenshots, all <laughs> just. <laughs> that's cool. Hate. We're probably all on there. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Remember this cast. episode of the yeah. Powercast? That sticker that you're off the team. <laughs> off the it's team. going up there now. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's great. That's uh, kind of Ultimate Warrior esque, where he says. Uh, to start your own wall of bodies. He's like in the movie Spartan 300, you know, when they have that wall of bodies. He's like, I'm starting my own wall of bodies today. Anybody who says shit that I disagree with, he's like, you're ending up on that wall of bodies. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Well, awesome having you here. You're a fucking beast. We're going to hit the gym with you a little bit. See what you can do in there. See if you're actually as strong as you are on Instagram. <laughs> Find out. I yeah. forgot my suit. So you your fake weights. We'll, we'll yeah. probably get up to 225 and need, <laughs> yeah. need some help. Fake calibrated plates. Yeah. <laughs> awesome having you here, man. This is a true honor to have such a awesome power lifter in the house. And uh, good luck with everything. We're fired up for you. And, and hopefully you kick some ass down there in Florida. And then hopefully you uh, represent the USA Come out there with a two by four in the American flag, hacksaw Jim Duggan style. <laughs> James when you go Brown to the, when you go to the World Games. <laughs> What's uh, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram. That's that's kind of where I actually do most of my stuff. Cool. I'm pretty bad at advertising, but uh, I got a website now too. There you go, BlaineSumner There you go. I got cool. the ebook on there. Guerrilla Warfare. About, it's about fishing predominantly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, VIP secrets. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, can't release with the gay secrets. for pay. Yes. Oh, hey now. <laughs> Yes. And your Instagram is just your name? Uh, I think or if you it? search my name, you'll find it, but my handle's the Vanilla Gorilla 92 oh, Okay. Excellent. All right. Multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle, and may all your shits be tapered. I'm at Mark's Millie Bell on Instagram and Twitter. Later. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors, 8 Man Strong Apparel at 8manstrong.com, bodybuilding.com for all your supplement needs. Increase your bench press at howmuchyourbench.net. Power the only strength magazine available both digital and print, thepowermagazine.com. I am Silent Mike. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. I'm Jimmy D S T T V everywhere that I would want you to find me. Follow the show on Instagram. We are at Mark Bell's Powercast. We're out. Mark Bell's Powercast is a production of supertraining.tv.